Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take a look at the ability of materials to absorb incoming radiation in the turn in forms of photons at various frequencies and energies. Remember the three mechanisms by which energy is absorbed. One is the photoelectric effect, the other one is the Compton scattering, and the third one is the pair production. Here we have a picture, kind of a drawing, of how we can determine how much of the material or how effective the material will be in absorbing energies. And it depends upon the frequency of the radiation coming in, on the wavelength, so to speak, of the radiation coming in. We have what we call a linear attenuation coefficient that depends upon the material, but also depends upon the wavelength of the incoming radiation. Notice that the attenuation coefficient, the greater this number is, the better it can absorb things. And this would be for lead. I believe this picture represents lead. Notice that for the, the low energy radiation, lead is really good at stopping what we call low energies to prevent what we call the photoelectric effect and the Compton scattering. And notice that it's not as effective initially to stop very high radiation energies in the form of radiation that would then turn into what we call pair production. But as the energies increase, lead becomes better and better and better at stopping the energy and therefore causing pair production to occur. But we're talking about very high energy photons of the 5 MeV to 25 MeV range. At the much lower energy levels, lead is fairly good at stopping incoming radiation. Now here we have an equation where we can calculate the fractional energy loss by a beam of photons passing through an absorber of thickness dx. If this was the original intensity of the incoming beam, and let's assume this to be I sub naught right here, notice that as it passes through a material, the energy will slowly be absorbed through the various mechanizations. Di is the small amount of change in the intensity, and dx is the small amount of distance we go into the material. Mu there then represents the linear attenuation coefficient. The bigger mu is, the more energy gets absorbed for a particular thickness. If we now integrate both sides, let's see if we can do that. If we put the negative on the other side, so we can write this as di over i sub naught. And instead of writing i sub naught, I'm just going to write i. i would be the variable, the intensity of the, of the incoming beam is going to be equal to minus mu times dx. And now we can integrate both sides. So when we integrate this, we get the natural log of i is equal to minus mu times dx plus a constant of integration. If we now take the antilog of both sides, we can say e to the natural log of i is equal to e to the minus mu dx plus a constant of integration. We can then simplify this. Oh, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Wait, I don't want a dx there. I want an x there. I've integrated x, dx becomes an x. I integrated x becomes a, uh, dx becomes an x, like that. That's better. And then we can write this as i, because the e uh, cancels out the natural log of i, is equal to e to the minus mu times x times e to the constant. Now we want to figure out what e to the constant is, and that makes a lot of sense when you think about it this way. If x is equal to 0, i then would be equal to the initial intensity of the beam coming in. So when set x to 0, e to the 0 is 1. That means that i sub naught is equal to e to the c, and that can then be replaced by i sub naught. The final equation becomes that the intensity as a function of thickness is equal to i sub naught, the initial intensity, times e to the minus mu times x, x being the thickness of the material and mu being what we call the linear attenuation coefficient. So here's the equation that allows us to figure out what the intensity will be after we've passed through a certain beam. Remember that mu depends upon the frequency or the wavelength of the incoming radiation. Now we may want to ask ourselves the question, how thick must the material be to attenuate it down to a certain level? Let's say we want to get it down to 10% or 1% of the original intensity. How thick must the material be? Which means we want to solve this equation for x. What we then want to do is take the natural log of both sides. So let's come over here. Take the natural log of both sides. So we have the natural log of i is equal to the natural log of, well, before I do that, let me take one step. That It's probably better to do it this way instead. Let's first divide both sides by i sub naught. So I'm going to write this as 
i divided by i sub naught is equal to e to the minus mu times x. Now I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of the left side is i divided by i sub naught is equal to the natural log of e to the minus mu times x, which means that the natural log of i divided by i sub naught is equal to minus mu times x. And finally, if I want to solve this for x, I get x is equal to 1 over mu, and I'll put the negative over here, minus 1 over mu times the natural log of the ratio of the intensity divided by i sub naught. Which means that if I want to, let's say, screen out x-ray radiation and want to know how thick my lead shielding needs to be, I need to calculate the mu for lead at that particular frequency, let's say 75 keVs, that's the typical x-ray at a medical office. So we put in the correct mu for that particular frequency or wavelength of x-rays times the natural log of i divided by i sub naught, where we can say that I want i to be 5% or 1% of the original intensity that's being emitted by the machine to protect ourselves and I can then calculate the actual thickness of that material to protect us against the radiation. So these are the two equations that you need to know. The equation that tells you how much intensity has decreased and the equation that you need to calculate how thick the material needs to be in order to attenuate it to a certain desired level. And again, realizing that mu does depend upon the particular frequency of the incoming radiation. Now that we know this, we're going to show you an example of how to actually use these equations to calculate i and x. And that's pretty interesting, so stay tuned and I'll have another example for you on this.